reschedule our work session for September 6th uh, to September 13th. We're doing this due to Labor Day. Uh, so we will have our council work session on September the 13th at 6 o'clock, followed by our regularly scheduled council meeting. Any questions or comments? Uh, before proceeding, well, I guess we can discuss this issue of uh, the flooding issue. Did you want to open that up for discussion or just give an explanation? Uh, basically, in summation, I'm not going to open it up because uh, that might be why I used to lay the table. But uh, uh, there were seven families uh, that were affected in the uh, North, uh, excuse me, East Maple Street Disaster Relief uh, Program. And um, there are seven families, uh, 13 individuals, 13, uh, 15 individuals, 15 people, and uh, we're trying to provide uh, um, a term for these individuals who will relocate to other areas or remain where they are, those who can and will walk through the door now. All right, I held them all as long as I can, preach. I got them warmed up for you. It's ready for me. Yes, they're ready for you. This is Pastor Granville Anderson. He's a pastor of Greater St. Paul AME Church here in Scottsbury. He's doing a wonderful job, and he's a hands-on, on-the-ground kind of preacher. I, I do appreciate you taking the time to hear me today, and I, I say good evening to you, and I do apologize for being late. But as you know, we had uh, quite an occurrence uh, on East Maple Street. We had several homes that got several feet of water in them, and people lost everything that they had. And we are trying to organize ourselves to be the best possible citizens we can be to help them in their time of need. And I wanted to get the opportunity to come tonight to face the council members and say to you, first of all, thank you, because I have heard from several of you. Thank you, Mayor, uh, who came out on the day of the incident. I, we uh, met at my church, and I was down doing some other things, so I didn't get to see you while we were there, but I do thank you for coming. My purpose in coming tonight is to ask that the council would consider some of the ways that you may give some relief to those folks that live on East Maple Street. <clears throat> One of the problems that uh, that is going to keep reoccurring as long as they live there is that there's a dam behind many of the houses that's been created because of the railroad. So anytime that there's a heavy amount of rain that comes very quickly, it's going to flood. A natural rain causes two to three inches of water to sit in their yard and they have to wait for it to recede. This particular time, we got better than seven inches of rain in less than 30 minutes, which caused that water to be about four to five feet deep. They had to use boats to get out of there. So we're asking, I'm coming here tonight to represent uh, those families and community members along with, I hope, all of you, in the thought of what we can do to help alleviate, number one, that problem that is there uh, with the flooding. Number two, to help us come up with solutions for the members of, of homeowners that live there that, that it, just to be honest with you, they really don't need to go back and live in those houses anymore. And so we need to find ways to get them some property that they may be able to uh, live in for the rest of their days. Many of them are senior citizens, and since they lost everything, including their homes, I'm hoping that the city will be the catalyst to come together with other entities to make sure that we do something that's probably not heard of in a lot of places, which is to say to these folk, we're with you and we want to alleviate the problem and this is what we want to offer to you in first. And I come to invite you to come out to be with the very people that we elected you to represent. Uh, if I was a preacher and I was in my pulpit, I'd say, say somebody say amen. <laughs> Can I get an amen? Amen. amen. You got it. I got one or two back there. All right. So, on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, August 27th, 28th, and 29th, we will be having fundraisers uh, at the Greater St. Paul African Methodist Episcopal Church on North Houston Street. That's 608 North Houston Street. Uh, Friday night, we will start at 6 p.m. On Saturday and Sunday, we'll start at 4 p.m. We've got various groups from various communities that will be coming in uh, to sing, to give praise, and to raise funds. And I was hoping that if any of your schedules will allow, you would come by and not only get in the fray of praising God, but you would take the time to say a kind word to those families that were 
uh, affected. And then lastly for me, I came to ask that you would give uh, some leadership to our consideration of what our request is, which is to find a way to get those people out of there and into new homes that that they can possibly uh, utilize for the rest of their days. And I want to tell you up front, these are folks, that many of them are beyond fixed income. They don't have any money. And so to lose their property like this means that they, they, they need some help. They can't afford mortgages. And so they need you, our, our city fathers and mothers, to help us to come up with solutions to remedy that problem so that they can go into a place, not have to worry about mortgages or worry about being flooded out and possibly lose somebody's life down there in one of these instances. I thank you so very much for taking time to hear me. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm here. Any uh, comments or questions at this time? Um, yeah, if I, if I may, I was going to talk about this during my report, but I'll get into just a little bit of it right now, Pastor, if that's okay. Um, you know, this happened, I think, in 2003 was the last time that, uh, that this 50-year flood or 100-year flood happened, and here we are seven years later in the same place. Um, you're right, there is a, I think, a 36-inch drain uh, that goes to, penetrates through the railroad track, and, and you're right, it serves as a dam up there in that area. Um, the, during the past several months, our street department has gone by there weekly and checked that drain just to make sure that it was not stocked up by trash or debris. But you know as well as I do, when you get the flood and you get the seven inches of rain in three and a half hours, um, all the debris funnels down to the drain. Um, it was a horrible sign. I, I do remember it in 03, and I think it was just as bad this time, as, if not worse. I uh, see those houses, uh, you know, the watermarks four and five foot on the outside of the house is uh, not what we want to see in this city. Uh, on the, the rain was on Tuesday. On Thursday, we met with the railroad people up there. We had three uh, representatives from Norfolk Southern, along with Charles King and uh, Ronnie Dollar and myself, and we met. Um, we discussed some options and we discussed some alternatives. In addition to that, the day of the of the flash flood, our Drainage engineers. We uh, almost a year ago we hired an uh, engineering firm to do a comprehensive drainage plan for the entire city. Uh, they have been working on that. Um, almost, they are almost complete, completed their study. They were going to be here that day for a meeting anyway. And when we saw the rain and how it was coming down, they came up a little bit earlier, so they got to see firsthand of not only what Maple Street looks like, but all over the city uh, in a flood situation like this. My, I, I told some of the residents, my goal up there, uh, anywhere in this city, even on Maple Street, is never to see a boat going down the middle of the road. Um, a seven-inch seven inch rain in three and a half hours, I don't know that many cities that could uh, handle that or control that. And, and you're right, Gary, as you said, um, or someone said, those two to four inches rain, those, no one should have to worry about having their house flood in a two or four inch rain. Uh, especially in a flash flood situation. If that seven inches that came over a two day period of time, I dare say the drainage probably would have happened. But, but regardless of the fact our engineers did come uh, and they did see, uh, we took them all over the city uh, and see all the devastation throughout. We had about 20 to 25 homes and businesses throughout the city. There's water over Broad Street. I don't know that I've ever seen water over Broad Street in this town. Um, there are three main drainage ditches uh, that run through the city and every one was at full capacity. Some of the problems that we have is some of the drainage ditches actually run under homes and businesses in this town. And it's just a matter of growth and through time that the drainage is not addressed. Um, and, and you are right in that one of the um, recommendations of their engineers was to, 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 to rebuild or remove those homes and relocate people. That is an alternative. Another alternative was to extend the height of the houses, which is an expensive alternative. And you know, I, I don't, I don't think that's really an option, though, in my opinion. And then the other one uh, was also that they would look at the railroad would look at putting a 48-inch pipe, another drainage pipe through, uh, through the railroad. Uh, we've already talked to the property owner on the other side of the railroad about that happening if we could do that. So. We took all of that information and our engineers are 
they have computer models and they'll, they, if we did this 48 inch pipe then it would show us what a 2 inch rain would do, a 4 inch rain, a 6 inch or 7 inch rain. So that's where we're at right now is them, our engineers looking at that to see whichever way we go, what's the best solution for us and, and the rest of it is all everywhere in Scottsville. Uh, we'd look to hear from that probably in another week or so. In the morning, as far as short-term fixes, um, the emergency, emergency management agency is sending someone up in the morning to talk to us about mitigation, about you know how we can, uh, what can we do on Maple Street? Uh, again, is there money available for the purchase of property or relocation? That that uh, that's in the morning, is the charge? Yes, and uh, so we we are working on that. And, uh, just, just so I'm saying all this just to let you know that we are trying to, to find solutions and uh, just, you know, you're going to hear this, the council's going to hear this in a few weeks when they come to our drainage day, but, you know, the early estimates on the drainage for fixing this entire city is going to be about $17 million over a 10 to 12 year period of time frame. That's a lot of money for Scottsboro, for anybody. So we were looking at prioritizing, uh, basically they got their priorities. And um, we know what those are, and that was one of the, the high-risk areas that we knew about. I mean, there's, there's three or four uh, that are just extremely high risk that we're going to have to deal with. Um, also, on September the 7th, the railroad is supposed to be back up here with us you know, to go over these computer models and, and let's make a decision on what can be done now. And that's, that's kind of where we're at. Um, I think our street department um, did a great job, our police department, our fire department, uh, the Scottsboro Rescue Squad, everybody pitched in to help uh, all over the city and I'm extremely grateful for that because um, it, it took everyone and, and it was just an unfortunate situation. And uh, we have placed, I think we placed some dumpsters up there to help with some of the cleanup and then uh, we've tried to send trucks by there two or three times a day. So, um, you know, we are working on it and we look forward to, to maybe working with, with you and, and others um, and, and kind of Okay, get this situation taken care of. I don't want to see a boat going down the middle of the street in this city again, anywhere. So. Well, we, I, let, me, let me say this, Mr. Mayor. First of all, we, we, we thank you, and we, we know we're not exclusive. That community was not exclusive uh -huh. to the flooding. There was flooding everywhere. And I, just, I happen to be a person that's, uh, I've been sent here as a pastor, so I'm new to the area. I've only been here since November. And I, I can truly say we appreciate how fast city resources got there. And, and we thank God for that, and we thank God that there was no life loss mm -hmm. in this issue. But I do want to say to, to, the, to the council, <coughs> one of the things that I want you to, to remember and just think about, <coughs> in the aspect of all that water coming and getting up, because I, I, I went over by uh, Harvest and they had water, this is pretty deep. 